Alrighty, friendos, welcome in. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at all of the new equipment added with the Ascension Phasmophobia update. Um, we're going to break it down into different tiers. So um, right now you see the tier three equipment, but we're going to start with the tier one equipment, then look at the tier two equipment, and then look at the tier three equipment. And I thought we would just play some games of professional and I'd show you how they work in a setting like professional. That way we can hopefully at least get like three pieces of evidence so I can show you as much of the evidence equipment as possible. Um, we can look at the sanity so I can show you the sanity medication and so on and so forth. And we'll get the ghost to hunt so that you can see the incense and all that fun stuff. So um, without further ado, we are going to go and start with the tier one equipment. Okay, so here are all the tier one equipment. Honestly, it looks a little sad, right? But I promise you, you're still going to be able to get the job done just fine. So we're going to start with the tier one head cams. Because I start with the head cams, kind of. It's kind of like my first go-to for tier 2 and tier 3. Um, but on tier 1, however, the webcam is just kind of... Or I should say the headgear. The headcam is just kind of like the GoPro that we knew from old Faz. It just kind of, you know. But you can turn it on and off with T. Of course, a little bit of delay. Um, but yeah, if you just want to like have your friends um, be able to like see what you're doing, <laughs> you can wear it. But that's kind of like... The whole point of it. Nothing else too exciting. Um, so we're gonna go in with we're going to take a flashlight. Here's a tier one flashlight. It's sort of like the weak flashlight that we used to know. Um, and I'm gonna go in with a spirit box and a or sorry, EMF reader and a glow stick. Okay, so as I was turning the breaker on, the ghost is like already throwing things. I don't Oh yeah, I threw this. I should probably turn the EMF reader on, right? <laughs> so right click turn the EMF reader on, and as you can see the needle's kind of going a little bit of everywhere, but it's not EMF 5. It would be very clearly on EMF 5. I think we're getting about, at best, EMF 4. So nothing evidence worthy, but something, you know, some activity. Uh, so the ghost is probably here, hopefully, or it's like a wandering ghost and it's over here at the moment. So we're gonna set up for this, this spot. Um, I do have the glow stick, however, the ghost has not touched the door, so can't do anything with that. So I'm gonna go grab some more evidence pieces. All right, so I've returned with a book, a spirit box, and a dots pen. I should have come back with the thermometer so I could like kind of check to see if, if this is, even is the ghost room. Also, I do see the bone right here. We'll wait till I can get a photo camera. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna pretend like this is the ghost room until I know for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and put the book down. Uh, to place the book, you press and hold F. It's gonna show you this little bubble. This bubble is just like the range the ghost has to enter to be able to give you ghost writing. So basically you want to cover as much of the room with that bubble as you can. I usually like to put the book in the garage over here. It like is clipping through the floor. <laughs> nice, perfect. Um, And then the dots pen, right click to turn it on. You actually don't have to hold this pen to see dots. Um, they actually just recently added a feature. We can press and hold F and place it like on something. And then you use your mouse, like just move, move it back and forth to rotate it. So you can put it like here. I personally, it's kind of like to throw on the ground. <laughs> You'll get dots just fine with that. So we'll leave it there for now until we know for sure where the ghost room is. I'll get a thermometer in a second and check that. Um, but we're gonna check for spirit box really quick. And to um, use a spirit box, right click to turn it on. Now I'm using the text feature. And if you guys wanna know how to turn that on, you go to your game settings, go to voice recognition and text. It's just a little bit easier for like things like the the Ouija board where it doesn't really recognize what I'm saying sometimes. So I like to use the text. Um, so if you're using that option, right click, or if you're not using that option, right click to turn it on and then you use V to like talk to the box. And what you're looking for is you want both like a verbal response and also this little ghost right here is going to turn white. So as you can see, this one's turning red. So that means we are not getting a response. So there's also still a chance we're not in the right room. It threw that object right here, but we're gonna grab the thermometer to double check that we're actually in the right room. Yeah, there's like some activity going on somewhere, which I'm pretty sure it's the three. Yeah, we actually do have activity five or EMA five. I just don't know where. <laughs> so we're gonna look around for the ghost a little bit more because it threw something in the garage, but now it's just like not in the garage. Um, we do have EMA five though, as evidence according to the activity board. If you have a jump outside of like ghost events and hunts, if you have a jump of four or five on the activity board, you can mark that as EMF five, which we definitely did. I just don't, I don't know where that happened, man. Now, if you're kind of this predicament where you, you thought you knew where the ghost was, and it's not there, you don't know where the ghost is, you got a couple options. Um, you can, with the new um, update, 
can actually walk around and look for your breath because the ghost room is usually the coldest room in the house so you could look for your breath if you don't see your breath you could both you could also then look around for like rooms where the ghost might have thrown something um i have a feeling this ghost might be in the basement because i haven't heard it throw anything and alternatively you can also use the parabolic mic which i can show you guys in a little bit try and find the ghost yeah i'm gonna like just go down the basement because i don't i don't see anything happening up here oh, we have a summoning circle yeah see there's um you see how this paintbrush is askew oh and i can see my breath so it's interesting that the ghost is up there doing things but it's down okay both ghost is down here we found the ghost um so this is a tier one thermometer it is very slow um you can either sit here with it in your hand or you can just throw it on the ground in the ghost room and come back and check it in a second um here is the we'll talk about the video camera in a second here is the tier one picture camera all of the photo cameras tier one tier two tier three have infinite pictures they can take infinite pictures now when you take a picture and go to your journal only 10 of those pictures are going to count but you don't have to worry about going back to the van and getting another camera you can just use the same camera the entire contract so i'm just gonna take a couple pictures to show you also the main difference between all the cameras is like the quality and the speed at which you can take a picture like, i'll show you really quick how fast you can take a picture i'm gonna waste some pictures but that's okay so i'm just continuously spamming right click if you guys can hear me clicking that's like kind of how fast you can take a picture what else we got can i get that to count and my best advice for getting tier three pictures is trying to get as close as possible to where you're taking a picture of and then like try to like center it with your reticle i found the most success that way i'm going to get a picture of the bone let's check the thermometer really quick okay so this is not freezing because it's above zero celsius and above 32 fahrenheit <laughs> above 32 fahrenheit so in order to actually mark it as freezing it would have to drop below that 032 bar and it did not so i don't think freezing and we're also going to move everything over <laughs> to the basement since it's not in this room i'm going to get a picture of the bone really quick okay all right again i'm just going to throw this on the ground and i threw it on the ground oh uh, let's go to the spirit box again too place this <laughs> okay so that is what a spirit box response sounds like you see how the little ghost lit up white and we actually got like a verbal response now the range of the tier ones kind of do do so you got to be decently close to the ghost to actually get the response um which is where the text option like that kind of fails because you can't really like move around and better find the ghost oh i just heard it throw something down there hey my freighter and you also have to have the um, overhead lights off when you use the spirit box. I don't have my camera to get a picture of that. Okay, so that's reading as EMF5. However, that was a ghost event, so I don't... Unless it was EMF5 off of something that I just threw. Hmm, I'm getting EMF here. That's interesting. Okay. So yeah, I wouldn't try to get like an EMF5 off a ghost event. That's usually not a, not, not, like, not a good source of actual like EMF5. You usually almost always get EMF4 from a ghost event. Okay, we'll get the EMF reader down here so we can actually check things. Although we already know we have EMF5. Okay, well ghost is hunting. I was, I was waiting to see if that was like a light breaking ghost event. All right, ghost is hunting. Um, but we already know that we have EMF5 and actually spirit box now. And we got an angry ghost. Okay, and it's normal speed. I actually think it might be a wraith because remember earlier how it was like doing things in the garage? Oh, and I think wraith is a dots ghost. We could sit down there and look for dots with the dots pen. Okay. But I'm still going to show off all the equipment even though I already know what ghost it is. Um, I'll go ahead and show off. Let's see. Since the ghost can hunt us right now, maybe I'll go and grab um, a crucifix and a smudge stick. They're going to show you how those work. The tier one, at least. So here's a tier one smudge stick tier one lighter which is matches uh the matches you have 10 of them and they last you 10 like one match lasts 10 seconds and then here's a tier one crucifix um it has a three meter range and only has one use i was going places right here for a second um the tier one smudge stick only blends the ghost for five seconds so like so the ghost will not know where i am 
from the minute the smudge finish starts burning to the uh, the minute it finishes burning. It's still like in this area because it's zombie yeah. here, so it's checking. But and it also will prevent the ghost from hunting for 90 seconds for most ghosts, 60 seconds for a demon, and three minutes for a spirit. Um, I could have started a smudge timer, however, I didn't. Um, we're not gonna go into the specifics of the, like the smudge timer in this video, though. Okay, I will go ahead and mention real quick because some of you may be wondering the moray blind and how it relates to your tier smudge. So it's according to the patch notes, the moray's blind goes up by 50% for each tier. So basically what I'm assuming that means is that for tier one, a moray will be blinded for seven and a half seconds. Tier two, more will be blinded for 12 seconds. And then for tier three, a more will be blinded for 17 and a half seconds. Now I could have that math wrong, but that's what I've calculated. So yeah, if you want to see the range of the crucifix and what it covers in the room, again, just press and hold F, it'll come up a little bubble. Like so. I'm gonna go grab the other crucifix so we're hopefully covering the whole room. I was going like pop a match so you guys can see what that looks like. Kind of burns out, and then after 10 seconds, it's done though. So you can also like see in the match box like how many matches you have left. In case you're like, wait, how many are left? You see how they kind of go away. So you know. And you can place back half used match boxes. That's kind of trolly. Okay. Grab another crucifix. I haven't showed off the video camera yet either. We will do that. And also grab her block mic. Okay. And it's actually inter interesting we got a wraith because wraith, oh nice. Um, pause that, hold that thought. So this is means the crucifix has been used and has prevented a hunt. Um, It will no longer work on the tier one. It is now null and void. No good. <laughs> um, But like I was saying, it's very interesting that we got a wraith Um, for, I'm sorry. Let me also, one more thing. Um, a crucifix after it's been used will prevent a hunt for at least 25 se seconds against most ghosts and then 20 seconds against demons. Also a quick side note on the range of the crucifix against demons. Um, according to the patch notes again, the effectiveness of a crucifix increases by 50% per tier for demons. So tier one is a five and a half meters, tier two is eight meters, and tier three is 12 and a half meters range for demons. Okay. <laughs> Like I was saying, it's kind of interesting that we got a wraith for this one because wraith is only ghost. Oh lord, that won't step in salt. Oh, that's actually EMF five on the crucifix usage. There you go. That's what EMF five looks like. I, I'm trying to explain the salt and the wraith um experience, but <laughs> this ghost won't let me. Okay, yeah, because the wraith is only ghost that won't step in salt, which means that it is not affected by any of the effects of the salt. So like. When we get to tier three salt and I'll show you what that is, a wraith can't step in that. So it will not be affected by it. Also, my dog say hello. Okay, so here's a tier one parabolic microphone. It's just for sound, like there's no display monitor or anything. And with any of the parabolic microphones, whenever you hit right click and, and turn it on, your sound's gonna get muffled. And so you're only gonna hear what comes to the parabolic microphone. Like so as you can see right now, I'm picking up the like the ceiling fan now, so the ghost is hunting. Okay, so now we're picking up the sound of the ghost hunting. So this tool can be used to find the ghost. Um, tier one, maybe not so much because the range is kind of doo-doo. <laughs> um, but as you progress to the tiers, it could be actually a really good tool for figuring out where the ghost is. because so you can kind of pan around. And now with the parabolic mic, the sound so like say we know the ghost in the basement if you get like a whisper it'll only you'll only be able to hear it when you look at the basement so like if you hear whisper and you look away the sound will go away until you go back it's actually like very directional now which is nice to help you better pinpoint where the ghost is even if you're just using a tier one parabolic microphone okay well now might be a good time to show off the um tier one sandy medication so what it looks like right click to use it and it's very 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 slow acting so if your sanity is low and you take one of these, you're going to want to sit outside for a second for it to actually, like, raise your sanity enough for you to go back inside and be safe. I think I actually need to take, like, mm, maybe two of these to be safe. I'm going to have to sit here for a second. <laughs> so, very slow acting, but in the end, we'll get your sanity up to where you need it to be. All right, I think the only other thing I really need to show off are the motion sensors, sound sensor, and candle. Which aren't, like, anything too exciting. Um, the motion sensor is kind of what we knew before. It tracks the ghost movements. So, we'll put it- actually, with this ghost being a wraith, mm, we'll go and keep it down in the basement, because right, I'm not sure if the ghost will use its ability. Okay. 
So it can it basically it's used to just like track the movement of the ghost. But new feature that's cool with the um a lot of these like placeable electronics is that you can left click on it to turn it off. So like say you're going against a ride you that's affected by you know its speed is affected by the um, motion sensor. If you want to just like not have to pick it up, you just want to turn it off. You just left click on it. So these can be very useful actually for a wraith test. You can like put the motion sensor by the salt. If the ghost activates the motion sensor but doesn't step in the salt, then you can assume that it is a wraith unless it somehow like did a shimmy shimmy through, <laughs> through the motion sensor. Uh, I'm going to put this uh, the sound sensor down so that we can see what it looks like in the truck. Okay, so now as you can see from the map, we got a sound sensor in the basement. Um, this screen right here of the little arrows, you can press it to like increase the range of uh, the sound sensor. Um, and if okay, that, there's it activating the ghost, activating the motion sensor. The little green line is the motion sensor. Now, what's cool about the sound sensors, and I'm trying to like get the ghost to show it right now. You can actually hear the sounds from the van. So if this ghost were to like throw something right now, we would actually be able to hear it throw something from the van from this TV, um, which could be useful if you know maybe you're like listening for like a poltergeist explosion or something, and you don't want to be inside the house. You could put a sound sensor in there and listen for one. Um, again, sound sensors for me are like super like viable to the way I play, but they could be cool if you're more of like a chill in the van kind of player. You know what I mean? I actually do have the video camera down there. Um, here's kind of what the tier one video camera looks like. Not great quality. Um, let's see, what is our sanity out? Okay, I can go back inside. I'll go and I, I can't believe I almost forgot to show you guys that. I'll go and take some candles in there so I can show you the candles. Okay, so to light a candle, you either have it in your inventory and also have a, like a match. So in your hand, have a match your inventory. Press a right click to light it. Or if you have the um, candle placed, you can grab a lighter match whatever and then once you have the match lighter lit hit f on the candle and i'll light it up okay so here's the absolutely adorable tier one camera <laughs> on the tripod i've noticed when you have the camera on the tripod though it's really a lot harder to see the display so if you're like checking for orbs in person i definitely recommend like just holding the video camera but oh yeah we were gonna look for dots because this is definitely a dots ghost this is a wraith yeah, the tier one tripods don't actually prevent the ghost from knocking over your video camera, so the ghost could still mess with your video camera with a tier one tripod. But in my experience, they don't do it that often. Okay, so we're gonna sit here, hopefully not die, and try to see some dots. Yeah, as you can see, this ghost is activating that motion sensor and not stepping in the salt. You know, I really thought, like, with the new dot state and dots, that dot getting dots would just be so much easier. But sometimes you're still sitting there waiting around for- oh, there they are, okay. <laughs> it's, it's like sometimes you just have to like say it then it happens right so you can also actually now get a picture of the dots um i'll try to sit down here my sanity is getting kind of dicey though but we'll see i'll try to sit down here and, and show you if you get a picture of the dots it actually counts as a ghost picture now okay bro actually, i actually might go take some sanity pills because this ghost just hit me with two hair <laughs> pulls so let me go do that really quick okay i went into the last two sanity pills Got my sanity go up a little bit and we'll go back down there and i'll try to get a, a dots picture it's actually well the one time i've done it so far it was really easy though i think i did it with a tier 2 camera and it will count as a ghost picture now so it's actually pretty worth it meaning if you get like a picture of the dots like the ghost in the dots you can then, then non also get a ghost picture but it's a good way to get a ghost picture in case your ghost isn't like doing ghost events or something okay i'm ready for dots again look me up no, okay, well, that's a good ghost picture, but I want dots. <laughs> Thank you for trying. Now give me dots. Okay. No. Do the dots. <laughs> Dude, I don't want this ghost picture. I want the dots picture. Come on now. Bro. This ghost is toying with my emotions right now. Here we go. Okay. Hey, all right. So yeah, she didn't have to be like that far away. When I took the picture, let's go and step outside in case my sanity is like plummeting. <laughs> um, but I waited until she was like about a medium distance away in the dots. And the dots move decently slow as well. So I was able to get 
the three star ghost picture just like that so it's not it's really not too tough like i remember in like pre-update dots picture was so difficult to get it was so difficult okay so i just realized that um in our wraith game i didn't actually show off the glow stick because well the wraith didn't have ultraviolet evidence um so go, let me go and talk about it really quick um it's pretty much similar to the glow stick we had before you hit right click to like turn it on um and it's super bright when it starts out but after time it like slowly dims you can still get ultraviolet evidence with it but it's not going to be as great so it's going to dim when it gets to a certain dim point <laughs> i guess you could then right click again to like freshen it up make it bright i'll go and wait a second to see if this ghost has ultraviolet evidence so we can check for it and maybe i'll also go ahead and grab some salt because you can also get ultraviolet evidence with salt now it's like if a ghost steps through salt and leaves green uv footprints that means you have ultraviolet evidence this ghost is doing something somewhere maybe another basement ghosty let's see oh is this like your room or did you just like come up here and event on me um confusion i think i just heard him knock on a window that could have been the living room let me see yay there we go okay we got some ultraviolet evidence right there now the thing with uh, fingerprints if you want to get like a picture of the fingerprints you actually have to like hold the glow stick uv light up to the fingerprint and let it charge up to get the picture just imagine i have a camera on me right now so i could take a picture of it right now but now that it's gone i so like so boy now that it's gone i cannot take a picture and it count as a fingerprint also you see how the uv has gone dim again go ahead and right click and it gets bright you can only do that that right click like the shake up one more time so let's go ahead and put some salt down as well put some like right here right here so i can show you what the um, the green uv footprints that you're looking for um to count as ultraviolet evidence okay i just threw something out here that'd be like really cool if you'd also step in the salt <gasps> hey okay there we go <laughs> so that when you see these green footprints that means you have ultraviolet evidence only ghosts with ultraviolet evidence will have these and you can also take pictures of both the disturbed salt and oh, okay well they're gone the green UV footprints. All right. I do believe I've talked about all of the tier one equipment, hopefully. So let's go and hop on to tier two equipment. Okay, so now we are on to tier two equipment. A little bit more of a stacked truck than the tier one equipment, right? Um, what's really cool is that the tier two head cam um, actually gives you a little bit of a flashlight. So basically, eliminates the need to use a, a flashlight but i'll go and show you the tier 2 flashlight um in case you want to see what it looks like it's basically kind of like the the flashlight we knew prior to the update good source of light um but does take up an inventory slot which is why i personally think the tier 2 head cam is the way to go over the flashlight so we're just gonna drop the flashlight right there and we're gonna start looking for this ghost so i'm gonna grab the typical stuff that i go in there to find the ghost emf uv and a spirit box. This ghost has done like a whole lot of nada, honestly. Um. Oh wait. <laughs> okay. Looks like the ghost is about here. Yeah, a lot of this equipment you guys are probably pretty familiar with because it looks and acts very similarly to what we knew prior to the update. Um, we actually could try this out really quick though. Hmm. Okay. So we got both respawns and the little ghosty lit up. So that way we know we have a Sabiret box it's evidence. Up. Can't really, I mean, I guess I could look to see if it left any fingerprints. Oh, we got some more oh, action. Baby. Okay, EMF three. Yeah, the sounds that EMF did change and I'll, I'll show you the EMF actually oh, sounds God. really, really cool. Whenever the ghost starts hunting, it's like, <laughs> it like starts raving. I'll try to show that to you guys if I remember. Okay, let's look for some more evidence. Well, we know where the ghost room is, so we'll check for freezing. We can grab a book and a dots. All right, so for the tier 2 thermometer, you um, press right click to turn it on, and then you press and hold right click to start scanning. Um, and then as soon as you really go of right click, it goes away. So if you want to actually read the temperature, make sure you continue to hold right click. Which as of right now, no freezing. Close, but no freezing. So we'll put that down. Put down the book and the dots. Um, if you see with the book, the range has increased um, from the tier 1. So you got a little bit more range for this ghost to do some ghost writing. Okay, let me go grab everything else I want to set up to figure out this ghost. And we'll go from there. Oh. 
Wow, like so much is happening at one time. I came back in, the ghost ghost vented on me and then promptly wrote in the book. I'm assuming to get some EMF off that. Okay, I'm gonna EMF two in the book, which you can actually take a picture of a ghost writing. I don't know. Okay, we missed the opportunity to get an interaction picture. I'm pretty sure you gotta do the interaction picture like right as it's writing in it. But we do have ghost writing, so we can mark that down. And I was gonna check for some orbs. Let's see. No orbs yet. Yeah, to use the video camera, like it's it's kind of how old Faz was. Just hit right click to go into night vision. Oh, um, I'm gonna go and throw this right here. And in a second, we'll go back to the van. I'll show you a really cool feature of the tier two tripod. Okay, let me email three on that picture. Let's see. Can we get a interaction picture? Nice. We got the three star interaction picture. Okay. Go and check for fruit. Oh. Okay, well, I think I know what ghost it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a poltergeist. It just did a poltergeist explosion. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll still go about and I'll show you all the cool things. Here's the motion sensor. You can change like how many beams it has by left clicking on it. Um, even like turning it off if you wanted to. There you go. That way the two beams is nice because it kind of tell you like what direction the ghost is going in. So like, if, so like see right there. It went through this line, then that line, so we know that it went this way. And then also touched this door, which it should, yeah, it was a poltergeist. It should have some fingerprints. Go ahead and do this, charge that up, and then get the fingerprint picture. Nice, we got it, okay. You do have to charge up the fingerprints, but we can actually take a picture of them now. Okay. Well, I actually know what ghost this is. We'll keep looking for the evidence though, right? Which I think we also got a spirit box. Yeah, okay, mark that down, right? Mm, Poltergeist also has... Oh, we already have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we already have all our evidence. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm showing all the rest of the equipment. So, okay, cool. One thing I do want to showcase, um, since we have a ghost with ultraviolet, is the um, footprints. And how, like, the UV footprints now counts as ultraviolet evidence. Let's see. We actually probably also want to take some sanity medication. I'll go and show you guys how fast the sanity, uh, the, the tier two sanity medication works. Pretty slow. <laughs> Pretty I can slow. But it does the job, right? Okay, so we'll grab this. We already got a UV in there. And I'm going to show off the candle. Basically a candle, <laughs> you know, but it looks really cool, right? Let's go and throw this in here for the ambiance. Boom. And I mean, what is cool? about the tier two salt is they can actually place it in a line now. And there are three salts. Well, oh, that was me that activated, okay. Which makes like a little cleaner look, right? You don't just have like these little piles of salt lying around. Okay, cool. So we did get it to step in some salt. We got a footprint. Should I get that picture or did it go away? Nice, it's still there, okay. We got some more feetsies, let's charge it up. Hmm. I'm like having a heart. Oh, it already disappeared, okay. But yeah, so if you see like that green footprint like that, that means you have ultraviolet evidence. So definitely mark it in your book. Wow, this ghost is all up in this motion sensor. Something else you can take a picture of is the disturbed salt, so like this. After a ghost has walked in it, you can take a picture and it'll count as disturbed salt. I mean, there's like a lot of things you can take pictures of, right? Take a picture of like the cursed possession, the bone. Okay, I'm actually gonna turn this uh, motion sensor so off because it's kind of driving me crazy. <laughs> Just hearing beep, beep. All right, and the parabolic microphone and the crucifix are kind of what we knew to, um, is very similar to like we knew in all um previous <laughs> version of Asmo. Um, but I'll go and show them off anyways. I did want to show you guys the feature of the tier two tripod. It actually, can like rotate the camera to get a better view. So, okay, pretty cool feature. Honestly, I kind of like a static camera myself, but it's there if you'd like to use it. And I'll go and throw a tier two sound sensor down, although I still don't find the sound sensors completely applicable for like the way I play, but we'll put one down anywho. Okay, so yeah, the range on the um, tier two crucifix is a four meters, which is so nice. Um, it has two uses. So one more use in the tier one crucifix. 
And um, all the Paramount microphones, like kind of when you when you turn them on, they um, muffle the sound around you, so all you hear is what comes through the Paramount microphone. Which includes like the ghost hunting. You can hear the ghost hunting through these. You also can like hear like the awkward like fan. Hear how the fan is getting picked up. <laughs> I don't really see how that's helpful, but like that's a thing. I was really trying to get you guys a parabolic mic sound on the tier two parabolic mic, but this ghost is just not talking to me. So I don't know about you, but I'm kind of over it. <laughs> um, only other thing I think I really want to show off Good. with the tier two equipment is the smudge stick and like how it affects the ghost. Let's see. I think everything else I've basically showed off. So let's just get the ghost to hunt. And I will show you the effect of the tier 2 smudge. Which basically what it does is it slows down the ghost. Kind of like the tier 3 salt, which we'll talk about when we talk about tier 3 equipment. Just grab the Ouija board and we'll play a little uh, hide and seek. Right. Hide and seek time. We got our ice cream cone. Go see. Go see. Come here. Okay, so instantly, see how she just like slows down? Of course, she had to go leave the room. I don't really have anything to keep her aggro. I'll try to talk to her to bring her back over here. But, I mean, that's basically the excitement of the smudge. Is that it slows them down a little bit, which <laughs> could be helpful in certain situations. I'm not like a huge fan of the slow down feature or the stop feature. I think it could be cool in like certain challenges and circumstances, but I was honestly kind of fine with the old smudge sticks and how they worked. Mm, so I do believe I have showcased all of the uh, tier two equipment. Um, I didn't actually show like the crucifix getting used, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just want to put it down like near where the ghost could hunt. If you press and hold F, you can place it and it shows like the bubble. So you want to make sure you're kind of putting in the area where the ghost is roaming. the sound of the radio sorry it sounded like something was about to explode in here that's so weird uh, so you want to make sure you put in the crucifix the bubble's gonna be covering the like the area of the ghost room and then the the uh, crucifix has two uses so once it burns twice it's no good anymore all right let's go ahead and move on to tier three equipment i was gonna mention really quick uh here is the tier two lighter <laughs> i mean not kind of like how we knew the old uh, tier two lighter to be. Okay, so for tier three equipment, I mean, as you can see, this looks insane. Like it doesn't even look like we're playing Phasmophobia anymore. So, um, you do have the option of like going in with the tier three head cam, um, which to activate the head cam, similarly with the tier two, is you press and hold T, whatever like your, I think it's your special button is, and it comes up with this like night vision, which personally, not a fan of like i <laughs> i would rather use a tier 2 head cam but the tier 3 head cam is super good for like the gold trophy if you're doing the gold trophy i do have a video of me using tier 3 equipment for the gold trophy i'll check and link in the description if you guys want to see that for yourself so i'm just gonna go in with the tier 3 flashlight which is pretty awesome it's it's pretty you know it's got a lot of light um and then we'll just go in with some typical like i usually do like an emf and maybe like uv Okay, it sounds like we already have activity in the kitchen. I want to show you how far away this EMF picks up the activity. Okay, so like the plate's all the way over there. And we're getting EMF from here. And as you can see, like the little arrows, the, the thick like black arrows below EMF level, that's like the EMF. So it's EMF 3, since three of those arrows are filled. Oh, okay, now we have EMF 2 and a door touch. Which little arrow is telling me that it is this door. So let's go check that for you. And we have UV. And a ghost event. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> so, do have UV? As you can see, if you um, shine your your flashlight on the the fingerprint or the ultraviolet, I should say, it like charges it up just like so. So, if you want to get a picture of the fingerprint, you have to do this: charge it up and then snap a picture. We got some more more EMF. Only EMF three. Oh, we do have. Um, it looks like the ghost room is maybe probably the kitchen, right? That's where the activity is happening. I did see my breath in here for a second, which means that we got to check for freezing temperatures. However, I don't even have the breaker on yet. Like I kind, I kind of want to get the breaker on so we can get some lights going. So, but we do know that we have fingerprints, right? So I should, I should probably mark that. 
or ultraviolet. It's gonna take me forever to start calling these new evidence by their new names. So let's go grab some more evidence pieces. And we'll take a look at the like parabolic sound sensor and all that after we've looked at all the evidence pieces. All right, so I'll grab um, sphere box, book, and dots. <clears throat> I probably should have grabbed a thermometer, right? So we can actually check the temperature in the room. That's, you know what, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Let me see, where were we seeing? Is our breath in here? Okay, actually, I'm gonna go get the thermometer so that I'm like putting down these evidence pieces actually in the ghost room. Okay, so I'm gonna use the tier three thermometer. Ooh, to confirm the ghost room. And according to the EMF, that is EMF two. I can see two little arrows there. So to use this, you press and hold right click and it'll tell you the temperature, which 9.2 is cold, but I feel like the ghost room would be colder, right? So let's check in here. 13, could even be like a garage ghost, right? Let's see. Oh, well, I can't, I think it's 14.3, right? Let's see. Yeah, so like the ghost isn't, isn't here. Are you here? No? Okay, so it is dining room as the ghost room. We have 4.5, so not freezing. It'd have to be um, under zero to be freezing, but it is, we have found the ghost room. So I'm going to put, we'll put a sound sensor in here so you can see the sound sensor, how it works later. You can put the book dots. So the book, similarly with all the other books, you uh, place it with F, you can press and hold F. But you could also like throw it down with G, but that just kind of, put, you, you want to press and hold F. It'll show you the radius of the book like where the ghost has to be to actually like give you ghost writing which um but tier three is huge so <laughs> tier three is you're basically guaranteed you get ghost writing if ghost writing is evidence okay and then dots i personally like putting the dots on the wall and i'm going to turn the light off so you guys can see that like look at that <laughs> so much dots and i found the most success using just one dots um, in my testing, and they could have patched this, um, when I had like two dots in a room, even against a dots ghost, I like wasn't getting dots. Um, so I think like two dots in one room is a little bit overkill, but that could definitely change after make, me making this video. Yeah, I'm not seeing dots yet. I did also bring in a video camera with a tier three chat pod. So we can go check that room for orbs, which the dots might make it a little difficult to check for orbs. But not really, because I'm not seeing orbs in there. That still is the ghost room. What we can do is we can put this down right there. Leave the lights off. Let's see, any other evidence we can check for while we're in here? Let me turn those on for just a second. We can oh, spirit box. That's right, let's try the spirit box. So, I mean, the spirit box works just very similarly to... The other ones, um, it just gives you a higher chance of getting a spirit box response. It has like increased range. So it does not look like we're getting any spirit box. You'd be um, looking to like hear response or this response right here return white. But since it's turning red, it means that we're not getting a spirit box response. So either the ghost isn't here or we don't have a spirit box evidence. All right, we'll check the temps one more time. It's still pretty cold in here. I mean, getting a little warmer though, right? Which is weird. Ghost, oh yeah, it's a little bit colder in here now. Okay, um, let's, let's, okay. <laughs> That's just the EMF reader catching that ghost event. Okay, let's check um the kitchen for orbs. Maybe like move operations to the kitchen, cause it's definitely colder in the kitchen, right? But I'm not seeing orbs. Wait, is that one over there? Oh, there is an orb in the kitchen. Wow, that is so sneaky. Okay, so we also have ghost orbs as evidence. So it does look like we are potentially dealing with a banshee, hauntu, obake, or even a mimic. Um, I do believe we still need dots for banshee. So we'll leave the video camera here. Um, let's try spirit box. We'll move this in here. Let's try the spirit box in this room. Oh, okay. There we go. We did get spirit box, which means, oh, we're also getting hunted. <laughs> which means we're actually dealing with a mimic right now. Because with this evidence, it, it's no ghosts. 
because um, for a mimic, orbs aren't actual evidence. You'll always get orbs for a mimic, but they don't count as evidence. So I actually didn't with a mimic right now. That is so, so spicy. Um, so we'd also additionally get freezing, probably in the kitchen. Can't tell exactly what it's mimicking right now. Okay. So now we're gonna check out all the other tier three equipments. Oh my god, the sound sensor set up. Definitely wanna check out the, the smudge, sorry, the incense, the crucifix. So back out in the van, we got the uh, sound sensor set up in the kitchen area. Um, with this little arrow here, you can increase the range. So you can sit here, listen to, oh, just through a plate. Okay, listen to, <laughs> listen to the ghost throw plates and stuff. And then over here, we got the um, tier three web camera, sorry, tier three camera. And we still got that orb in the kitchen. We can also rotate the camera around if we wanted to. Not that we really need to, right? Because honestly, what we want to look at is right here. And yeah, and with the tier three tripod, your camera will not get moved at all. So you don't have to worry about placing your video camera in the house and the ghost knocking it over or anything. Okay, so I think before we like take, I show off the sanity medication, how it works. I think I'll go in there, I'll show off the crucifixes. Um, let's take one crucifix. Oh yeah, the tier three crucifixes, it actually can prevent like one cursed hunt. So I'll definitely try to showcase that. Wow, there's like a lot of activity. So maybe we'll wait off on the crucifix. We'll go in, I'll show the tier three incense and the tier three salt, how it affects the ghost during a hunt. And then we'll take some sandy pills, use the cursed possession, and I'll show you how the tier three crucifix can prevent a- it prevents one cursed hunt. Okay, well that's fine. We're gonna- we're gonna show off the salt in here. Hopefully the ghost doesn't also break this light though. Okay. So we're gonna put some salt here. Hmm. I- hopefully the ghost doesn't come in here and step in the salt before the hunt though, so I might wait to put some more salt down. And it's kind of touching these doors. Don't come in here. Here we go. Feels slow. She's actually a fast- I think she's mimicking a fast ghost right now, too. Ghost, come here. Let's go and use this so I can show you how she, like, stops in place. Kind of hard to show. So she's actually mimicking a revenant right now. That's kind of spooky. Okay, and the hunt's over. So you saw how fast she, um, how slow she got in the salt. It was a little kind of hard to tell because it was a revenant, so she was already like slow with outline of sight. So when she stepped in the salt, she was like basically standing still. Anyways, but um, can be a great strategy. I would say is a great strategy in theory for trying to get a ghost picture, but right now the way pictures kind of prioritize is if you try to get a picture, I'm gonna take these dots down. This is really loud. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the camera kind of prioritizes disturbed salt over the ghost picture. So as of right now, using the salt to get a ghost picture isn't great until they like patch the camera taking, which we can go and take a tier three camera in there so I can show you what taking pictures with it is like. Um, but I think at this point, we'll go ahead and take some sanity medication. I'll show you guys what tier three sanity, sanity how it works. So I guess I should show you with the, also with the stamina regen, right? So let's let this do its thing. So along with the, um, this tier three sanity medication, <laughs> restoring your sanity, also gives you like 10 seconds of, um, stamina regeneration. So I'm going to go and like get my sprint. I'm going. I'm going to take this. So it's broken. As you can see, I can just kind of run for like a really, really long time now. Actually, let me test it. Let me see exactly when the 10 seconds of sprint happens. I'm just gonna use all these. Let's just grab them all. <laughs> Let's go ham. Okay, so I should have my full sprint. I haven't like sprinted at all. Let's go and take this. Start sprinting. Okay, so yeah, as soon as you take the pill, you have, oh, excuse me, go. So I'm in the middle of explaining something. Um, you have your very, very long sprint. Actually, man, I was still going. But it, it looks like if you are like out of stamina and then you take this, you have to wait for that stamina cooldown to go away before you can start sprinting. So you want to take this before 
you start running, I guess, like, I, I don't really know when I would use this in a situation. I mean, I guess if you want to, like, loop a ghost for a really long time, you could use this and, like, have a really long sprint. But yeah, you want to make sure you use it, like, before you're actually, like, in the stamina recovery mode, if that makes sense. All right, well, this one we haven't used yet. We'll keep that there in case we want to try something spicy. All right. I don't even know what our cursed possession is yet, to be honest. I think we should go get the crucifix, a picture camera. Oh, I still need to show off. I'll show off the lantern really quick, too. Or should I say the firelight? So this is like what it looks like in the dark. It was actually really, yo, I like that. So you can press it, um, press it. You can place it down with F. I feel like it's like very Halloween-y, right? The orange. This is how much light you get. Not like insane, but it's kind of also a vibe at the same time, right? I have, oh, look at the lights on the ceiling. I'm like really excited about all the stupid stuff. <laughs> Let's go and place that right there. Awesome. Also, here's the um, tier three lighter. I didn't really show that off. I'm obsessed with it. It's like aesthetically it's like one of my top five favorite things i think it's it's like it's i don't know i have everything about it i just i love it okay so things i still want to show off yeah i keep talking about it let's take this in i haven't shown off the motion sensor um but we got the crucifix parabolic microphone and a camera so let's try to find uh, the cursed possession really quick if you want to see this parabolic microphone really shine, I definitely would recommend checking out my um, gold trophy strategy video where I use the parabolic microphone to find the ghost and also like figure out the ghost without even being near it. <laughs> um, this thing is going to be huge for the gold trophy if you're trying to go for your gold trophy. Um, but similarly with the other parabolic microphones, it kind of dulls the noise, right? So all you hear is what comes through this parabolic mic and it gives you a little blip on the radar. So like, see, so you just touch the door over there, kind of like tells you where it is. Now it doesn't really stay on the radar for very long, which is kind of um, sad, but also it has like directional sound. So like if say the sound happens right here, if I were to start looking away, the sound would also go away, which is the same with all the parabolic microphones, but oh, don't know what that was, but it was a something. <laughs> okay, so we got the bone right here. We'll go ahead and take a picture. Boom. And similarly to the other cameras, this thing has infinite amount of pictures. Um, yeah, pictures are a little wonky right now as far as trying to get three star pictures. So don't feel bad if you're having a hard time getting them. It's kind of like just sort of how the game's going right now. Um, okay, I'm still trying to find this cursed item. A lot of activity going on here, huh? Oh, we should check for freezing, right? Because this is a mimic. So we should we should have freezing in here now. Ooh. Being stubborn about getting freezing. I <laughs> see. Where is your freezing at? Oh, no, you... Okay, well, there's gonna be freezing, because it's a mimic. And it has gonna have spirit box freezing, ultraviolet, and orbs. Um, oh, wait, let's check in here. Four. Okay, I don't have voodoo doll, so it's probably gonna be... Summoning circle, or... It looks like Ouija board. No, tarot cards! Okay, I was like, what did I forget to check for? That's really dark, because the ghost broke my light. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, we might and we might die to hangman here. Um, but we'll try <laughs> we'll try to get a cursed hunt. And hopefully, the thing about preventing a cursed hunt with this crucifix is that the ghost has to hunt within the 4 meter range of the crucifix. So, you ideally, if you're trying to prevent a cursed hunt, you want to have the crucifix either in the ghost room where it's going to hunt or like if it's a summoning circle, you want to have it on the summoning circle. Um, and basically wherever the ghost is gonna be whenever the hunt starts. Can you, can we not do that? Oh, I keep dropping this. Okay, uh, we can take a picture, right, of the tarot cards. Let's see if I don't mess this up. Okay, we got it. <laughs> um, maybe I should see if there's anything else I wanna show you guys in case I do die. Um, I think I've shown just about, oh, motion sensors. You could throw some motion sensors down really quick. Boom, boom, okay, I can only hold two. I think everything else we have touched on. Okay. And I think we'll go ahead and do the salt and incense again because that was kind of scuffed my demonstration. <laughs> um, the, the tier three motion sensors, motion sensors will only pick up the ghost, by the way. So it won't like if you walk by it. I'm not sure about dead friends yet if it'll pick up dead friends, but it does not. You know, before you'd walk by the motion sensor and it pick you up. This one does not do that. Okay, but it's really cool. It like turns and like looks at the ghost. You gonna do it? Yeah, I'll show you how to get it. 
doing the, the three, um, oh, I just did it. We'll go for a finger for a picture right now. Oh no, you ate the crucifix. Don't do that. Did I get the, okay, I did get the finger for a picture. Um, I'm actually not sure if it still prevents a cursed haunt, even though it's been used once. Can you, you want to do some motion sensor stuff? You want to give me freezing yet? There it is, okay. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we'll see some motion sensor stuff while we pull cards. There's, a, there's like a 50% chance I'm gonna get hangman here. Hermit, fool. Okay. Okay, so that was like a little experiment for me to see if <laughs> it'll still prevent a cursed hunt if it already been used once, and it doesn't. So it looks like it'll either prevent a cursed hunt or prevent two hunts. Like you can't both prevent a regular hunt then a cursed hunt. It's either one cursed hunt or two non-cursed hunts, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to show off the cursed um cursed hunt ability again. It would be really cool if we had a summoning circle. We're back on professional. Oh uh, no. Is it gonna be tarot cards again? <laughs> Is it gonna be tarot cards again? Oh, it's a monkey paw! Okay, this could be fun. So basically we just need to find the ghost room really quick. And then we will wish to see the ghost and I'll show it that way. So we have a monkey paw. What I'm gonna try to do is wish to see the ghost, which is supposed to spawn the ghost wherever it is. And then hopefully, which actually what we could do is we could pick up the crucifix and move it to wherever the ghost is as well. Okay, let's just go and try it. See ghost. Nice, okay, so she spawned right here. Nice, okay. And it did exactly as it was supposed to. And I wanna see if they patched Okay, they did patch the interaction pictures. We're actually going against the phantom. <laughs> that was the phantom ability right there where she disappeared. Unless it's a mimic. I haven't really looked for all the evidence yet. We're on a different game, right? Because I died last game. So, yeah, that's kind of how the... um. Oh, God, I'm stuck in the wish to see the ghost, though. I think... Okay, so this kind of... This is this kind of sucks. <laughs> um, I wish to see the ghost, which kind of, like, dampens your um seeing, your, your sights, your visual. So I will probably be like this until the ghost hunts again, like, naturally. So, <laughs> this is fun. This is a good time. Um, I do want to show off the salt and the incense again because I kind of butchered it the first time with that uh, mimic. So, let me go grab that. Um, we do kind of need to get this ghost to hunt again though. So that we can see. <laughs> so, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to like wish to be sane, which will lower my sanity enough to get the ghost to hunt. That way, we can get our vision back. <laughs> um, let me see if I can hide here really quick. Okay, I can. And then after that's over, we'll wait for it to hunt again and I'll show off the salt and whatnot. Okay, where's the monkey paw? All right. So we're just going to, yeah, wish to be sane. Um, put your sanity at 50%. That way the ghost should hunt soon on its own. And this also be a good way for me to see that if you prevent- You didn't spill the fuck out, man. If you prevent a cursed hunt with a crucifix, will all the hunts still be cursed hunts even though that cursed hunt never happened? We'll see if it hunts, if this ghost ever hunts. Okay, here we go. It is hunting. Yeah, it does seem like if you prevent a cursed hunt with a, a, a two or three cursed fix, the hunts will be cursed hunts from then on. So this hunt is lasting way longer than a typical <laughs> typical hunt, which is what cursed hunts, cursed hunts have last longer. And also shorten the um, grace period to, I believe it's one second. All right, hunt is over. So now we can actually try to showcase yeah, now I have my vision back. <laughs> That's all you gotta do to fix it if you kinda get in the same predicament as me, where you're stuck in the wish to see the ghost visual. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna just go to hunt again. Hopefully, it is a phantom, so there's a chance it might hunt on top of me. Um, but when it comes to this room, we're gonna use the incense so I can show you how it like just puts stops the ghost in its tracks. And then I'll put after it's done with that, I'll put some salt down to show you how it slows it down. She did. Well, battery, she totally. Go see me. It's going to stop running tracks. Come. Huh? Start walking again. Put some salt down. Go Steve. Now she slows down. Put some more down. It's really low key. Might use the salt to get away right now. Put some right there. See, can I hide in here? Can I hide in here? Can I hide in here? <laughs> Bro, there's no hiding. We'll just hide here. It should be fine right here. So yeah, could be like a good way to um, get away from the ghost. 
Not that you're just always gonna have a, a container of black salt in your hand, but <laughs> if you need to get away like that, you don't have a smudge, could be a good little strategy. Okay, I think the hunt's over. And also, side note, um, the wraith is only ghost that won't step in salt. So the wraith is only ghost that is not affected by the effects of the any of the salt. So um, it, it won't walk through tier 3 salt, so it won't be slowed down. Okay, well I do believe that is all the tier 3 equipment and how it works. Hopefully I demonstrated it well. I mean, there's probably a bunch of like small nuances and cool things about it that I haven't yet explored, but honestly, it's so cool that we have like options and how like and all the different equipment. And that's all I got for you guys in, in this video. I hope you did enjoy. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you like the video, make sure to drop it a like. If you love to drop me a sub, good luck ghost hunting, and I will see you in the next one.